When you look at some of the best-known brands in the world, you don't need reminding about what they are or what they do. For example, what about this one or this one? Then there's this one, and their main rivals, this one. And even though, with one exception, none of these brands actually have the name of the company or the product in them, you can tell by looking exactly what the company is and exactly what they make. For example, you can tell just by looking at this collection which company makes running shoes and which company makes computer software. And in fact, if a brand is really successful, you only have to see its name or logo, even out of context, to be reminded about what the company does or what the product is. I mean, for example, take a look at this photograph here. Now, if you're familiar with the brand, you'll know that even though it's on the side of a racing car, it's got nothing to do with motoring, it's got nothing to do with motor racing at all. But you know exactly what it is, uh, and if you live in a market where they don't sell this, I'll tell you it's an energy drink. But if you do live somewhere where they do sell this product, you'll know immediately exactly what it is just by looking at the brand. And it's the same online as it is offline. So you need to be consistent. So if you're, let's say, you're Sam Owen 101 on Facebook and new video for you on Twitter and new video to go on YouTube and Sam Owen's video productions on LinkedIn and new videos for you on Pinterest, well, nobody is going to know that you're the same person or the same business. Likewise, if your website has one color scheme and your Facebook page has another and your Twitter feed has another and you use a different logo on your letterhead than you do online, well, quite frankly, people are not going to take you seriously. So how can you be consistent? Well, really, this is something that you must do from the very beginning. So when you're just starting out, you need to decide on a business name. Now, of course, I suppose the obvious way is to just simply use your name. But that can be problematical if you ever decide to sell the business on to somebody else. You're also selling the rights to your name. So generally, if you plan on perhaps selling your business on later on, then using your name isn't a very good idea. What is a very good idea, though, is something that is descriptive of what you do. So if you make a, uh, a particular product or you sell a particular service, then including that in your business name is a good idea. And likewise, you can also include keywords as part of your business name that will make it easy for search engines to find you and it will sort of stick in people's minds that you are or your company is or does this particular thing and it's a keyword that sort of lodges in their brain. Regardless, you should have something that's easy to remember, something that's not too convoluted, something that uh, easily trips off the tongue, something that people can sort of lodge somewhere in their brain. And when they need your product, they need your service, they can simply think, ah, yes, we can have so-and-so. Or, for example, you could have something cryptic. Probably the best example of this that I know is Nike. And Nike was the ancient Greek goddess of victory. So, of course, a bit cryptic there. They were sort of thinking, well, Nike, victory, wear our shoes, cross the finish line first, that sort of thing. Something else that you really do need to do is to make sure that nobody else is using it. If you go to a whole lot of trouble of setting yourself up with a business name and then you find that actually somebody else is using it, you're going to have to start all over again. You also want to make sure that it's not deliberately confused with another more established business. And I'll give you a real life example here. Here in the UK, there is a chain of pharmacies and drugstores called Boots, Boots the Chemist. And they are a regular presence on just about every high street and shopping mall in the country. Now, I know of this guy whose name was Booth. And he started 
a chemist shop. He was a pharmacist by profession, and he started a chemist shop, and he called it Booths the Chemist. Well, Boots the Chemist weren't very happy about this, and I'm told that they got him to change the name of his shop so that it couldn't be confused with theirs. So you do have to be very careful when choosing your business name that you can't purposely confuse it with another company. Something else that you should do is to have the same color scheme. So you want to have the same color scheme on all of your social media sites. You want to have the same color scheme on your website. And also offline, if you run um, a bricks and mortar business, you want to make sure that your letterhead, that your signage, if you have a van, you want to make sure that it has the same colors as the rest of your business so that you've got you know, a completely seamless association in the customer's mind between those colors and you. You also want to have the same logo. And this is very important because... Like I was saying earlier in the video, people will associate the logo with you. So you need to make sure that it is the same across all social media sites. And it's a good idea to get it professionally designed. You can find someone to design a logo for you on Fiverr.com. That's Fiverr with two R's. And this is a site where people will do all sorts of stuff for $5 or for multiples of $5. And you can see here, I've done a search for logo design, and there are quite a number of different people offering uh, this particular service. You should also have the same handle or username on all of your social media. Like I was saying earlier in the video, if you're one name on Facebook and a different one on Twitter, and a different one on Pinterest, then people aren't going to know that you're the same person or the same business. So it's a good idea to go through and register an account on all the different types of media, all the different social media platforms, even the ones that you don't plan on using, primarily because this will stop other people from hijacking your name and trading off your goodwill. Likewise, you should register all the extensions of your domain name. So you want to have your domain name .com, .net co tv co uk com au etc etc so finally you want to get things set up so that whenever somebody sees your logo hears your business name or sees your handle they'll automatically think of you and then you know that they become true fans <laughs>